<laughs> what is going on, everybody? Depraved Slash here. We are back with another, well, reaction, somewhat. I'm Not depraved. Amazing. I'm Hellcat. Together we are. Hello, Depraved. Took me a second. I was like, wait, what? Uh, so. <laughs> We want to branch out and kind of do other things other than just music reactions. Mm -hmm. um, this one's kind of been inspired for me from uh, the Matthews fam, as well as Dwayne on his second channel. Right. Um, they've both... Uh, Matthews fam's been doing it a while. Right. And then Dwayne's just started doing it recently where they're branching out and reacting to other things. And honestly, it's not new for us either. It's, no. it's just that we never got much traction, so... Right. So we're going to start forcing it. Yeah. Because... We want to. We just we want to do other things. Right. Other than just music reactions. Now, that's not to say we don't love our music reactions and are going to stop them. We just would like to do other things. And that's why this is coming out on Monday, a day that we normally wouldn't drop anything. Right. So. But I am excited to check this out. I told her to pick a topic... Right. And she did. And I used that topic and chose 13 terrifying serial killers you've definitely never heard of. I, I bet feel like they're making a claim that they can't back up. Right. Yeah. I bet we've heard of most of them. We've watched so much true crime. Well, and her and I both also have studied so many yeah, serial killers. Yeah, and I, I have so many books on their own. And then I studied in college. And so we'll see. We'll see. And this video is brought to us by the letter S <laughs> for cereal exactly. uh, the infographic show um, we have we have personally watched one other video from them okay she may not remember it this is the same guy that described Jeff the killer okay when we were trying to figure out got it what all the hype was about who for he was for the, the rap battle. battle yeah 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 um, so I at as least as long as it's not that dude that speaks in monotone. You mean the guy that talks yeah, like I... this? Uh, yeah, that one. Sorry. That Nightmares. One. Nightmares. Anyways, we're <laughs> super stoked to check this out to prove this guy wrong. Cause I, like I said, I, I bet we've heard of all these people. <laughs> Look, if it proves us wrong, I'm still psyched because it means that I'm learning about 13 new serial killers. <clears throat> Right. We'll see. We'll see. So, with that being said, we're going to react to this if you guys have already seen it. If not, click the link in the description below or hang out with us. Yeah. Uh, this isn't really a song, so I mean, you can learn with us or not Not learn with yeah. us. That, that's your choice. <laughs> um, but there's going to be pauses. But regardless, the link is down there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's going to be pauses. We're going to talk about things. We're going to laugh. This is probably going to be a long video because it's already a 15 minute thing. Right. So it could be a half hour, 45 we'll minutes-ish. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? So with that being said, we're going to slash it up and break it down. I'm so used to saying that. That's not even really necessary in this No, aspect. it's really not. We're going to watch and enjoy ourselves. Although slash it up does kind of have a nice ring when we're talking about serial killers. Right. <laughs> this is... What's her name again? <laughs> the Infographic Show. And this is 13 terrifying serial killers you've definitely never heard of. All right, bring Let's it. Let's see what they've got. Challenge accepted. Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, and of course, the mysterious Jack the Ripper. Look, that's already four that I, we know of. Yeah, no, I know. Let him preface it. Let him preface it. They're names that strike fear into the hearts of any true crime buff. These are the household names of serial killers. True. But they're not the whole story. No. It's estimated that in 1987 alone, there were almost 200 serial killers operating in the U.S., and you probably haven't heard of most of them. But that doesn't mean that they were any less deadly than the more famous ones. Here True. are 13 of the most terrifying serial killers you've never heard of. Number 13, Vicki Dawn Jackson. Hospital. So already straight out the gate, one of our true crime shows covered her. Yeah, Angel of Death. Yeah, yeah. Um... She's actually probably more popular than this guy realizes amongst the serial killer community. Now, when we say serial killer community, we're not talking about, like, being uber fans or anything like that. But we're definitely people who enjoy reading up on them and, and studying them and 
psychopathology and so on. And so Find on. the psychology behind them. Fascinating. Exactly. Exactly. Those are places of healing, and of course, one of the most important positions is the nurse. While the doctors do the trickiest uh -huh. procedures, nurses are the ones who interact the most with patients. That gave Vicki Don Jackson, a nurse at a North Texas hospital, the opportunity she needed. She was known she as doing? a wallflower in town. Can she looked like one she more was time? milking a cow. <laughs> yeah, she's she's milking a cow. Like I'm not sure, and that I'm just not sure. I'm just not Nurses sure. Nurses are the ones who interact the uh, most. I've never been that happy that in a hospital. That gave Vicki Don Jackson, a nurse at a North Texas hospital, the opportunity <laughs> she needed. She was known as a wallflower in town. A quiet woman who never attracted much attention. But at her hospital in 2001, there was a mysterious epidemic of what cases where patients came down with mysterious respiratory ailments and died, despite sometimes being hospitalized for minor ailments. Right. Up to 20 patients had died, and the hospital soon realized that Jackson had been the last person to see all of them. But what was killing them? The investigation soon revealed missing vials of Mivacurium chloride, a drug that can paralyze the breathing reflex. Despite a syringe with traces of... I swear to God. Isn't it like sucks and all chloride? He said something else, but I thought it was sucks. I could be wrong. I swear to God, if I hear mitochondrial DNA at any point in this 15 minutes... <laughs> we have a show that really loves saying that. To be so mad. Um, I feel like the... Pro Portions are slightly off, like like their hands no, the, are the, almost the size. The of chloral dude person thing. Oh, a lot of them use sucks. Oh, the one that I know of that we've seen a lot of was a dude that was trying to kill his wife. Oh yeah, no, there's there's a fair amount, <clears throat> especially in the Angel of Death uh, hospital setting. Yeah. Chloride, a drug that can paralyze the. The investigation soon revealed missing vials of Mivacurium chloride, a I drug that can same, paralyze like... the breathing reflex. Despite a syringe with traces of the drug being found in her house and witnesses reporting that she referred to taking care of patients who were causing trouble, it took over a year <laughs> for her to be arrested. While she could have faced the... Moral of the story, when you're in the hospital, don't be a dick. Right, there could be someone out to get you. Honestly, though, like, if I remember correctly, there were people that were just about to be released from things that didn't even have anything to do with respiratory problems or whatnot, that she just decided, hey, I have the opportunity. But we also don't know if they were a dick while they were there. I mean, honestly... All of those people look super cheery because none of my experiences in the hospital have been particularly pleasant. pleasant. Baby, most of your experiences in life aren't particularly pleasant. You go through a lot of pain. Well, I mean, there's that too. Patients who were causing trouble, it took over a year for her to be arrested. While she could have faced the death penalty for the 10 counts of murder she was charged with, she ultimately pled no contest to the charges and is serving a life sentence. But her attorney is calling for a new trial. No one expected her to be a serial killer, but the same can't be said for the next killer. Number no 12, one expected Carl it. No Pansrat. one ever expects it. Born to oh, East he's Prussian an immigrants asshole. in Minnesota, Carl Pansrat yeah. was trouble from the time he was young. <laughs> he was a notorious bully. He was in court for being drunk and disorderly from as young as 11 years old in 1902. His yeah. parents sent him to a reform school, and he was treated horribly oh, by the staff members, leading him to burn it down. He right. spent the next decade in and out of juvenile hall and eventually prison getting into fights wherever he went. But he was just <laughs> ramping up his campaign of violence. Under an alias, he joined a ship's crew, and he and a fellow sailor stole a boat and killed the inhabitants. While his partner in crime was arrested, Panzram had his key to the world. His reign of terror was only beginning. After robbing the William H. Taft Mansion in Connecticut- Oh no! Bad time. We got an ad. I have heard of Panzram. He was not a cool dude. I think he also- was accused of some pretty serious things before he burned his boarding school down at the school. I don't know. That's a, This is actually the one I don't know much of. Oh, no. He's... Well, I mean, it's it's the early... Uh, what? I think they said, like, 1900-something. But... Apparently his forehead has a Hitler stash, though. I, I don't know what's going on with, like, his hands being the same size as his head and so on and so forth. But, yeah, he was... <clears throat> I hate calling anybody a bad seed, but he was a bad seed. 
Hubbard's reign of terror was only beginning. After robbing the William H. Taft Mansion in Connecticut, Pandram had enough money to go anywhere he wanted. He traveled the world, killing men and boys alike. He was particularly fond of luring drunken sailors away and killing them. While he was arrested a few times for minor crimes, they never tied him to his murders, and he went on to travel to Portuguese Angola and kill people while working on an oil rig. It was 1928 when he was finally arrested back in America for a <coughs> burglary and confessed to several murders. He was given a sentence of 25 years to life and quickly turned it into a death sentence by murdering a foreman. As he awaited execution, Panzram penned an autobiography where he yeah. claimed to have murdered 22 people, although only proof of five was found. He went to the gallows in 1930, taunting the executioner <laughs> before the final drop. The next killer had a distinctly more <laughs> innocent personality. And the executioner Some scratching times. the back of his head. It's like, what the fuck? He was fucked up. He was. And part of the claim is that when he was at the boarding school, there was a lot of um, sexual misconduct to the boys. And it's where he was introduced to rape. And he turned it around as a power move, which, like I said, he he got in a lot more trouble before he burned the school down. But it was because he tried to run away once, got caught, brought back, and then he burned it down so that he could run away again. And he actually became a uh, runaway. Like he did, what was his name? Know, Panzeram. But yeah, he... Panzerman? I think it's A-R... A N. Carl Panzram. Yeah. Ah, so it actually looked somewhat like him. Somewhat. He does have the Hitler stash. In in the very round way. But yeah, he was not somebody that you wanted to run across if you were male, mostly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> The next killer had a distinctly more innocent personality, sometimes. Number 11, Hi. Harrison Graham. Harrison uh, Graham Harrison was a seemingly Graham. nondescript man living in Philadelphia in the 1980s. He had a history of problems in school and showed signs of an intellectual disability, but had lived mostly a quiet life and worked in the construction industry. But by 1983, he was living in a notorious drug den and had begun dealing pills himself. He still had a reputation as a good neighbor, but there was just one problem, a foul Odor. smell coming from his apartment. His landlord tried to evict him, but Graham refused to let him in and fled out the fire escape. The police <laughs> were called to break open the apartment. What they found was horrifying. Two recently killed women's bodies were found within, as well as five skeletons of women who had been killed <laughs> long ago. Yep. A massive manhunt was launched for Graham, and he was eventually convinced to turn himself in by his mother. There, he confessed to the killings, saying he strangled the women while on drugs, but it soon became clear that he might not have been in his right mind. He was fixated on a cookie monster toy and seemed to switch between three personalities. Frank, a drug-addicted killer, Junior, a confused toddler, and Marty, a friendly man eager to cooperate. While the judge rejected his insanity defense and he was convicted of all the murders, there were doubts about his competence. He was sentenced to death but was required to serve out a life sentence first, meaning he would never be executed. In prison, he was a model that inmate and actually weird. became an ordained minister. The next killer was discovered yeah, in an even seems... more shocking fashion. Like, what kind of sentence is that? How? Who did that? I have never. I've never heard of that. I did hear, though. Schema posted it. Ow, it's pinching me. And I'd actually heard the story before. A long time ago, there was a court jester. Yeah, I, I Who I, was sentenced tribulate. to death. Yeah. But... The king did hold high enough regard for him to let him choose, choose how he was going to die, and he yeah. said old age. Yeah. So, yeah, he was banished from the kingdom, and yeah, the, the king chuckled a bit, got irritated, and was like, "Fuck you! <laughs> All right, you win. Checkmate." Yeah, tre Trebulet <coughs> was his name. Um, I knew of him. Two. I've heard of him. So, okay, so that's three out of the ten that I have heard of. I'm two for one. Now, two, two and one. they were never quite sure if the last one was actually um, mentally incompetent in terms of having uh, the multiple personality, split personality right. disorder or not. But his mom did convince him to turn himself in. So there's that. Right. He became an ordained minister. The next killer was discovered in an even more shocking fashion. 
Number 10, Bella Kiss. The year was 1914 and World yeah. War I was sweeping across the European continent. Countless young men on both sides of the conflict were drafted into action, and one was the quiet Hungarian tinsmith Bella Kiss. Twice married and the father of two, Kiss was very You were killing us with the ads here, man. Those are disproportionate babies. I love how they do the evil chuckles on these people. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. He's right. like, no, I don't want more kids. Quiet Hungarian tinsmith Bella Kiss. Twice married and the father of two, Kiss was very interested in finding himself another woman. He had a long distance correspondence with women through newspapers and claimed to offer his services as a fortune teller. His Again, neighbors he's thought him milking an odd a man, cow. Particularly for his. Uh -huh. he's, they, 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 they're really into this. <laughs> yeah, like. I love uh, the artwork. Honestly, you know, if that's what he's offering, I'm not interested. I would not be a taker. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, and he's got a seven head. Cue ball look. Uh, maybe it's double digits. Okay. His hairline ran away a long time ago. <laughs> then claimed to offer his services as a fortune teller. His neighbors thought him an odd man, particularly for his obsession with the large oil drums he used to hoard gasoline for the coming war. They right. had no idea how right they were. After Kiss was drafted, the Budapest police came to confiscate the drums of gasoline for use by soldiers, but the drums were given off an odd smell. And when the soldiers opened them, yeah. they were horrified. Each of the drums contained the body of a murdered woman. In total, 24 bodies were found, and suddenly Kiss became one of the most wanted men in Europe. A search of his house had found that he'd been collecting information about murder and had been defrauding and killing women for years. The military police eventually tracked Kiss down to a Serbian hospital, but the savvy serial killer was one step ahead. He placed another soldier's body in his bed, escaped, and was never <laughs> seen again. He wasn't the only serial killer to terrorize the- He got away with it. I'm not sure I remembered that part for some reason. I remembered the, the uh, oil drums not being gas and then like them finding double digits worth of women and the fraud. But for some reason, I didn't remember the little switcheroo. He pulled a fucking... Uh, wow. Pulled a Hannibal Lecter on him. Well, yeah, I mean... All right, all right. <clears throat> Ed escaped and was never seen again. He wasn't the only serial killer to terrorize the European continent in the early 1900s. Number nine, Peter Curtin. German Peter Curtin had one of the most common stories of serial killers, being raised in an abusive home himself. Curtin didn't take long to follow in his father's footsteps, enjoying torturing animals and attempting to drown a playmate at the age of five. Ah, he would later claim to have five. begun his killing spree at the age of nine, pushing a child off a raft and leaving him to drown. As an adult, he spent time in and out of prison for a series of petty crimes, and his crimes soon escalated. Unlike many serial killers, he didn't have a favorite weapon. He would use whatever was available, and the police had no idea a serial killer was on the loose. But right. Curtin would soon gain the nickname the Vampire of Dusseldorf. Curtin would kill at least nine victims over his decades-long killing spree, but he was undone by a simple mistake. When a young woman named Maria Budlick escaped from him in the woods, she told... What was her last name? Because I think I heard that wrong. Butlick. I'm pretty I, 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 sure he yeah. said Maria Butlick. Right. Now, I have heard of him, and obviously the more popular moniker for people to know him by is the Vampire of Dusseldorf. I right. mean, like, that that's what he is known of as now. I kind of wish <clears throat> this guy had set it up in a way where he had their name and then what their serial killer name was. Right from the start. Right from the start. Yeah. Because, like... I don't know him by name. Right. I okay. I know him as the vampire of Dusseldorf. Or Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf or the, the, the first whatever. time, like, when he said his name and then he started talking about him, I was like, okay, well, that sounds like a lot of them. And then when he said that he had tried to drown a playmate at five, I was like, oh, yeah, I know who we're talking about now. Right. So, again, I've actually watched full episodes on several programs on this guy. And... They speculate that the likelihood is that he just had one of those hair trigger tempers, and that's what set him off, and so that's why he used whatever was around. 
There is one person I'm specifically looking for on <clears throat> this list. Really? I'm predicting they are on this list. Are you? Because of how surprised you and I were that I knew of your favorite serial killer. Urtzabeth? Well, I wasn't going to say the name. Oh. But yeah. Well, I didn't like... Most people won't know who that is. Because it's not the anglicized name. Uh, yeah. It's Elizabeth Bathory. Well, now, now that you've said you've it. You've already said her name. Yeah, but I didn't say it. Okay, never mind. Um, I don't know. I hope I so. Don't, I don't think she's that well known. Well, I know, but I, in terms of like, am I guessing that she'll be on this list? I, I mean, like, I hope that, I don't know. Yeah. Simple mistake. When a young woman named Maria Budlick escaped from him in the woods, she told of her close encounter with Curtin in a letter to a friend. When the letter addressed incorrectly was opened by a postal worker, she gave it to the police, who right. got enough information from Maria to, to finally arrest Curtin. While his attorneys attempted an insanity defense, the jury oh, was on. horrified by his many crimes and sent him to the guillotine. His head is currently on display at Ripley's Believe It or Not in Wisconsin. This next killer was about as unassuming as it gets. Number 8. Lydia Sherman Born in 1824, Lydia Sherman was an orphan raised by her uncle and married her first husband at 16. But after he lost his job in 1864, Sherman wasted no time. She poisoned him with arsenic after taking out insurance <laughs> money on She's him. Like, she collected the payout and then set her sight. I, like, I haven't heard of this one. I, I don't know that I, I've heard of her. Yeah, she's like, I mean, like, I've heard this kind of story before, though. Right. You're useless. You're worth more to me dead. Than you are alive. And then I can move on. Find something new. Although, usually the ones we get in our true crime shows that are like this make it through two to three husbands before they get caught. Because they do it the first time. Oh, honestly, that's what I'm guessing. And then it becomes... Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Mm-hmm him with arsenic after taking out insurance money on him. She collected the payout and then set her sights on more targets. Three of See? her young children died tragically of typhoid fever within the next year, except that the true case of the death was arsenic, once again, allowing her to collect Killer the insurance money. Too. In total, she would poison six of her own children, three husbands, and two stepchildren. But right. would go on and a partridge in a pear tree. Right, right. I think I have heard of her. Now that they mentioned three husbands, six kids, and two stepkids. That sounds very familiar. See, I, 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 yes and no. Because I usually don't hear stories of people killing their kids with arsenic. No, no. I've, I've definitely, and this is not the only one. The, the, more, the more common death for kids that I usually get are drowning. Or smothering. Or smothering. Yeah, no, but I've, I've definitely heard of either Lydia or someone that did pretty much precisely the same thing. Poison. Right. He would poison six of her own children, three husbands, and two stepchildren, but would go undetected until 1872, because who would suspect a widow? When she was eventually arrested and convicted of second-degree murder, she would even second be degree. able to escape and find work as a housekeeper to a rich widower. He would be soon to meet an un... Wow. 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 Like... All right. I Honestly. think as a guy, I think as a guy, one of the first questions should be, how many dead ex dead ex-husbands do you have? Right. I, that's a, right, but a lot of them lie. You uh, know, I mean, in today's day and age, you can find out. Right, but we're talking right. 1900s. I mean, like, yeah, letting her off second degree murder it it seems like to me that um the people that poison are more likely to form almost an addiction right. to poisoning people which is somewhat surprising because of the slow death that a lot of these things cause especially if she's trying to pass it off as like typhoid fever she's got to keep them going for at least a couple days a week a couple weeks you know, some people have poisoned over the course of a year or two years. Right. And even if you despise the person and you're completely cold hearted, which that's a process already, it's a mess. 
poisoning people is not clean. No. Like, they get sick. They, they puke. They, you know? I mean, like, so if you're playing the grieving wife or mother or whatever to pass this off, like, you've got to be kind of the nursemaid, which means you're also creating more work, work. for yourself. I mean, like, I just... But it seems like those people develop an addiction. You may as well get a job. Oh, well. As a nursemaid. Right. I mean, you know. All right, so he's going to die. Maybe. No, he's dead. To escape and find work as a housekeeper to a rich widower, he would be soon to meet an unfortunate fate as well. But Sherman was eventually caught and returned to prison, dying less than a year later from cancer. The next killer was able to carefully abuse his position of authority. Number seven, Gerard Schaefer. In Martin County, Florida in 1972, Gerard John Schaefer Jr. was the law. A sheriff's deputy, he had been working patrol since he was 25 years old, but he had a sick obsession. From a young age, he had been fixated with spying on young women and killing animals. He was fired from a teaching job and rejected from the priesthood in quick succession before turning to law so, enforcement. You know, that law job would come to an end as well when he picked up two teenage hitchhikers and kidnapped them, tying them up in the woods. When they escaped and reported Schaefer, he claimed he had just been trying to teach them a lesson. He was fired, but it was only the beginning. Two months later, Schaefer would kid. I feel like they based an episode of NCIS on this. Oh, I think they did. Or was it? It wasn't NCIS, was it? I think it was. NCIS is uh, the naval one. You're thinking CSI. Yeah, it might have been. I think I think they based a CSI off of it. NCIS is the. I remember them naval being criminal. out in a uh, desert-like area, mm -hmm. standing in front of a barn, and he ends up killing the other cop comes out to talk to him in the episode oh. I'm thinking of because I feel like a lot of the story obviously when I say based on I don't mean like to a T yeah they, they're inspired most of most of their episodes are inspired by right. true crime yeah. I don't um, know, it'd be something to look up right I I think I've heard of him before I don't think I've actually heard of him but it's sad <laughs> it's a sta sad state of humanity that even if we haven't heard of that specific person, there's someone out there that has done something so similar right. that it's hard to discriminate. This, it's it's like really, are we all capable of we're being all doomed? Well, yeah, like, but we're not even creative about it. Like, and I'm not saying that in like a let's praise the serial killers kind of way, but it's like, you know, how people say, oh, I don't want to write lyrics to songs because somebody else has already written it. And it's, and everyone's like, no, if you write it, no matter if you're saying the same thing as they're saying or not, you're phrasing it a different way. It's still yours. And that's kind of how I feel like all aspects of humanity are, is there is somebody out there that thinks the same kind of way that you do and it's just um yeah he's got some filed down teeth yes he's a badass sheriff yes kidnapped them tying them up in the woods when they escaped and reported schaefer he claimed he had just been trying to teach them a lesson he was fired but it was only the beginning two months later schaefer would kidnap and murder two teenage girls and similarities between that case and the hitchhikers who escaped led police to look into Schaefer. They searched his house and found disturbing stories full of descriptions of kidnapping and murdering women who he referred to as whores. While Schaefer was only convicted of the two murders and given a life sentence, he was suspected in the murders of up to 30 women and girls around the country, something he would boast about to anyone who would listen. But he would take those secrets to his grave when he was stabbed to death by a fellow inmate in 1995. <clears throat> this next killer led to a campaign of terror across the Great White North. Number six, Rob Robert Carver. William Pickton. I've heard that name. I've heard the name. Um. So this is. You know, I don't even know where that was going because it's not even the same thing. Okay. All right. Um. But yeah, I've I've heard so many similar. Right. I'm going to say I haven't his. heard of him specifically. I'm just going to, right. you know, I, I may have, but I'm going to say I, just because I don't recognize his name. 
seven. Now, Mr. Picton here. Right. I, I do recognize. Right. Robert William Picton. Robert Picton was a pig farmer in a small town in British Columbia, and he had a dark past. He and his brother's farm was a rundown place that many people suspected was a front for criminal and gang activity. And in 1997, he was arrested for the attempted murder of a sex worker. But Bill Hiscox, a worker on the farm, I'm beginning to think you chose what a lot your of serial are killers based, of? based on the last names of their victims. Because I think you really just want to say like Hiscock right. and Butlick. I'm, I'm sure that's not exactly what they are, but that's definitely what they sound like. <laughs> yeah. But I also recognize a lot of the general stereotype trope from like CSIs and stuff like that. Right. <clears throat> he was arrested for the attempted murder of a sex worker, but Bill Hiscox, a worker on the farm, noticed one thing he couldn't ignore. Women who visited the farm kept going missing. After police obtained a warrant to search the farm for fireworks, they were able to fireworks. get enough evidence to charge Picton with six murders, for which he was sentenced to life in prison. But they eventually hmm. added charges for 20 murders. While he wasn't convicted of those new charges, he reportedly taunted authorities that he was only one short of 50 murders when he was caught. Picton wound up being notable not just for being the most prolific serial killer in Canadian history, but for inadvertently bringing attention to the number of First Nations Canadian women who go missing each year. Our right. next killer was able to hide yeah. behind... Yeah. So th there was a whole outcry, which right That also so, had a CSI episode based on it. Uh, yes. They changed some things. They made one of the and brothers disabled. No, I think that's Criminal Minds. Dear God. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, but... You know what I'm talking about, though. Yes, I do. <clears throat> but... Um, end up finding, like, there was a, a huge amount of indigenous people, uh, women, that were going missing. And there was not really much done to look for them. And a lot of speculation from the, the authorities <clears throat> that they were street workers... And they just moved on. You know, a, a, a lot of stuff that happened, like, with a Green River killer. Like, no, no, they just followed the highway down south. Or they moved on to greener pastures, what whatnot. And, and so it really did help the outcry too late. But it, it right. brought attention to the fact that, no, like, they're really at risk. Really at risk. And... and not cared about as much. It's it's all bullshit, guys. I I I'm glad that the outcry happened. Um, also, funny to note that he's Canadian. You know, because they're so nice guys. Apparently not. Apparently not. <laughs> pig farm though. Got to be suspicious of the pig farmers. Just you know. Right. <laughs> Find a pretty face for a time. Number five, the co-ed killer. It was 1967 when an area of Ann Arbor, Michigan was known? terrorized by a serial killer. Young women started turning up dead one by one after being stabbed, strangled, or mutilated. The first victim, Mary Fleezer, would be found on an abandoned farm by two teen. If she's not on this list, I'm calling this list a hoax. But how is the co-ed killer not? Honestly, I, I thought that was a pretty... I thought he was like at least middle tier of middle. what people should know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Teenage boys, but it would be almost a year before the horror repeated itself. When the second victim was said to have been seen with college student John Norman Collins, the police questioned him. But the charming young man was soon let go for lack of evidence. Six more young women would be found dead. But when Collins's name came up again, the police zeroed in on him and searched his house. Like they found bloodstains, and Collins was charged not. with murder. The handsome all-American boy was revealed to have a dark obsession with bondage, torture, and murder, and it earned him life in prison where he remains to this day. But the rest of these killers yep. made a name for themselves in sheer numbers. Look. Number four, the Harp Brothers. Can I just say I'm really, really tired of the saying all-American boy? Because 90% <clears throat> of the time, when they say he was a nice all-American boy, <clears throat> shit's about to go down. 
You're about to learn <laughs> about the porno mags he kept under the bed. You know, the detective, bondage, S, you know, just all sorts of crap, like... The like, white hood hanging up in his closet. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> let's just stop with that. Like, what is All-American anyway? Not that. <sighs> not that. And obviously it's been proved that apple pie should not be included either. So, let's just, you know... Say that while he might have been nice to look at, he was <clears throat> not nice to be around. I'm going to say she's number one. I don't know. All right. I mean, like, he's doing body count now. So that's that's a bit different. All right. Killers made a name for themselves in sheer numbers. Number four, the Hart Brothers. Often considered America's first serial killers, McCaja and Wiley Hart were that. terrorizing the American South almost as long as there was a United States. These two loyalists to the British crown had been on the wrong side of the war and became notorious outlaws. Unlike many other serial killers, they didn't have a specific type of victim, and they didn't seem to be obsessed with killing itself. They committed blah, robberies, blah, 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 blah. they set fire to buildings, <laughs> and they targeted women and men alike. It wouldn't be long before posses were organized across Appalachia to hunt for them. While they shared many traits with the highwaymen of the time, often brutal robbers who targeted travelers, the Harps seemed to be in it as much for the thrill as anything. They may have killed as many as 50 people before joining up with the notorious Mason gang of river pirates. But when they killed the leader and tried to collect a bounty on him, they were recognized and arrested. Ah! And after a brief escape attempt, the violent rampage of the Hart brothers ended at the gallows, ah! their heads put on display as a warning to other outlaws. These okay. next kill so technically, are they considered serial killers, though? Because serial killers aren't just their classification, FBI classification. They aren't just people who go around killing people. killing people. These are fixated, obsessive killers who have specific sort of operandi, See. MOs and signatures and so on and so forth. And they're doing it to... I mean, money is one. Would they not just be mass murderers? Well, no, because mass murder is a ton of people at one time, one event, that's it. Spree killers are people who never stop killing, but they move from place to place to place. And, you know, that's kind of Bonnie and Clyde as spree killers. So maybe they're more spree killer category. Because they are moving around, but there's really no... I mean, if they're it, it, thrill killers, that's spree killers, kind of. Serial killers are kind of, a, it's a different, they have a cooling off period, you know. I mean, like, there's, there's set things for that. Right. I just don't know if they qualify. It's sort of more like, I don't know, the, the gang outlaw just jackasses, honestly. Right ended at the gallows, their heads put on display as a well, warning to other outlaws. These next killers were among the most unlikely. Number three, Los Poquianchis. Rancho El Hamhel was a notorious hub of prostitution and other criminal activity in the Mexican state of Guanajuato. Uh -huh. But it wasn't run by your everyday cartel leader. It was run by the Gonzales Venezuela sisters, a quartet of the most ruthless women Mexico has ever seen. Maria Delfina, Maria del Carmen, Maria Luisa. I've heard of them. The Marias, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that I've heard of it. Uh, their their group, the way that he classified them, but I've I've heard of them as the Cuatro Marias or something like that. Um, or the uh, what are they called? Brothel leaders, madams. Yeah. Mexico has ever seen. Maria Delfina, Maria del Carmen, Maria Luisa, and Maria de Jesus got away with their crime spree for years until police picked up a woman named Josefina who had been working as a go-between for the sisters. She was suspected of kidnapping girls to be taken to Rancho El Hanhel, and she quickly spilled all. What she revealed shocked everyone. The sisters had made Rancho El Angel one of the worst sites of mass murder in Mexican history. The police raid found the bodies of almost a hundred people. The sisters yeah. had been killing prostitutes when they became too sick or old, forcing them to swallow drugs for transport and murdering men who came there with lots of money on them. Their crimes exposed, the sisters finally faced trial. Delfina and Carmen died in prison. 
Maria Luisa went mad and was sent to an asylum, and Maria de Jesus completed her 40-year sentence and was released, with her whereabouts post-prison unknown. The next killer... Well, that's interesting. I don't remember her being released. I like the spinning eyes to signify madness. Very Coraline. Um, yeah, no, they were prolific, but they were also in it for profit one way or another. Right. You know, bottom line, get rid of the old for forced euthanasia, basically. Um, drug, uh, well, there was drugs, but there was a lot of sex Debbie trafficking. Use in Mexico. What was that? Use in Mexico. But a lot. Bad joke. Yeah, a lot of sex trafficking. Kidnaps, just, but yeah, why? <clears throat> I don't understand going to any place of ill repute. And I'm not just talking about brothels. I'm talking about any place that you know is a money industry with a lot of cash on your person. It, I mean, like, nobody is asking for problems. I don't believe in that. But on the flip side... You become more of a target. You, Yeah, you, you kind of do put a target on yourself if, if that's... I don't know. Right. I don't know. ...turned the last frontier into his personal killing grounds. Number two, Robert Hansen, scarred by acne and shy... Oh, he's not scarred by acne or shy. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> they legit are trying to hit us with like a six minute ad. Well. All right. All right. Personal killing grounds. Number two, Robert Hansen. Scarred by acne and shy due to a stutter, Robert Hansen didn't seem like the intimidating type, but his unassuming appearance oh. hid a seething hatred for the women who ignored Rage. him. After yeah. serving a stint in the Army Reserve, Hansen moved to Alaska with his second wife and became so, deeply involved in hunting. He's a baker, and he's the one that inspired... Um... Shoot. Uh, he's the one that would hunt people. Yeah, it's it's like Manhunter and um, the... I'm going to steal this from Whisking, guys. Blow a weirdo, save a life. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. A yeah. lot of these serial killers go on these sprees because women won't pay attention to them. What is that called? It's not the toughest game. It's the... I'm not saying all of them. I'm just saying... game, something like that. Ladies. Right. Ladies. But unfortunately, I will say this, like, if you're talking about somebody who is building a seething rage and you're talking about them being sort of skinny, introverted, acne ridden, think about when that like starts. So you would have to start 13, 14, handing old. out, you know, AI blowjob Betty at like... Maybe they should just do that for, like, 12-year-olds. Happy hormones, y'all. AI auto blue. Yeah. Like, congratulations on becoming a teenager. You will want to kill yourself from now on. <laughs> this will help you out. Yeah. I, I don't know. But he was truly terrifying because he was really unassuming in appearance. But he became really good at hunting. Big game hunter. Uh, he was a pilot. You know, he he was a baker in his town, and so he had his own, um, it was his own business, and then he, he was married, and so even a girl who escaped, who could describe his basement, like, to a T, um, and the cops, like, drove her around, she pointed out who, whose house it was and everything, like, they couldn't find, well, they, I don't think that they were able to get into the basement because they just had no probable cause to go that far in. And it was just, he had maps when they finally found them. Uh, there were like X's on them. And unfortunately, some of them didn't have remains. Some of them they couldn't identify. It's, yeah, like, he's inspired a great many uh, books, movies. CSI, I think, has, definitely has what, Criminal Minds or something. A lot of them. Right. Yeah. I'm actually surprised he's on this list in terms of people that not. I, that's of. what I'm saying. Like he's he's got his own kind of niche series of things about him. 
pretty sure the animal was. I don't know. I, it's it. like the de deadliest game. I think is. I was talking about the comedy with uh, Rob Schneider. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying there's just so many things that are inspired by him that it, it seems yeah. Right. Assuming appearance oh. hid a seething hatred for the women who ignored him. After serving a stint in the Army Reserve, Hansen moved to Alaska with his second wife and became deeply involved in hunting. He was arrested several times for assaults, thefts, and abductions, but it wasn't until 1972 that the horrors really started. Robert Hansen was about to go hunting for bigger game. He began targeting sex workers around Anchorage, kidnapping and torturing them, but he wasn't satisfied with simply killing them. He would release them and then proceed to hunt them like animals. Bodies were found around Anchorage, but no connection was found until one of his targets managed to get away. Cindy Paulson managed to escape before being taken to Hansen's isolated cabin and described his truck enough to police that they were able to find him. Hansen was charged with 17 murders, but is believed to have killed up to 21. He was sentenced to 461 years plus life in prison, where he remained until his death in 2014. But for the most prolific... I mean, yes and no. I, I think that was a little... not completely correct in its timeline there. Right. I know people, uh, sex workers were disappearing, and there were some that had complained of abuse at his hands, but he mostly flew them to his isolated hunting grounds, which is why. It's one they of the things that kind of got him caught up. Right. I don't think it's going to be Elizabeth. I don't know. I was wrong. I don't know. I mean, like, we're moving away from the U.S., are we not? The killer of them all, you have to go to South America. Oh. Number one, the monster of the Andes. Pedro Lopez grew up in Colombia, one of 13 children, okay. and displayed disturbing behavior from when he was young, reportedly abusing his siblings. By 18, he was a car thief and did time in prison where he reported being horribly abused. He was released, but what came out of prison was something different and terrible. He would soon move to Peru and began targeting young girls. He claimed to have killed over a hundred when he was captured by a local tribe. They planned to execute him, but a local missionary convinced them to hand him over to the oh, police instead. The police released him. A terrible mistake. Of course. He would return to Colombia and then to Ecuador and continue his hunt until he was caught in 1980 while trying to abduct a girl by some market traders. When he was taken into custody, he confessed to killing over a hundred girls. While the police were dubious, they were about to get horrifying proof. A flash flood revealed a mass grave containing many of his victims. He was sentenced to prison for killing 110 girls, but was shockingly released in 1998. It wasn't long before he was suspected in another murder in Colombia, but he was never found. The Guinness Book of World Records briefly acknowledged him as the world's most prolific serial killer, but the award has since been removed. After all, no one wants someone to try to top it. For more on the world's worst okay. serial killers, no, check out no, no. America's Most Look. Evil Serial Okay. First off, that's nowhere near the most kills. Well, and law enforcement, like, need to talk to each other and need to stop being so stupid. I mean, I, I get space in prison, blah, 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 but let some of the people that have, I don't know, weed, weed charges. charges. Yeah, exactly. Go. Don't let the people that are convicted of serial killing, for goodness sake. I mean, like, are you he kidding had, me? He had a ditch pool. He had his own mass grave. Oh, are, are fucking you kidding bodies. Me? And I have heard of him, uh, Mon Monster of the Andes. Like, that is ridiculous. And it's, it's stories like this that honestly make me so mad. <laughs> so mad. Like, that missionary, you know, look, do good or whatever. Take him to the police. Police, release him. Fabulous. Right. Fabulous. Let, let the tribe execute him. That's all I'm saying. They had the proof. That was their form of justice. Let it happen. Um, it might be that uh, or Elizabeth Bathroy wasn't mentioned more because it's kind of iffy. Like, yes, they have journals in her hand. Yes, they have. Right. Her death count ranges somewhere between like. 600 and 650. Well, some people don't even think she's got that many. Yeah, well. It like her death toll from assortments of books range from like 10 
to yeah. 650. Like, it's, there's not like a dedicated number. There's, it's, it, most people seem to agree it's on around 600. Right, right. Um, but uh, the 10 or so that they normally classify are the ones that got her in trouble, which were the upper class. Right. That she was supposed to be finishing school. But here's the problem. Again, she had money. She was a widower. And therefore, she could have been framed. Easily done at, right. at that point as well. So it's not 100% on whether the complaint about her being a serial killer is valid. Right. Um, now, from my point of view... Would she have been responsible for multiple deaths? Yes. And that's just going back to the times and being a countess and the type of punishment that they were supposed to show their their servants, their, their indentured servants, um, who her husband was, who her, her parents were to right. start with. I mean, and she was known to have an atrocious temper that they think might have had something to do with epilepsy and inbreeding and so on and so forth. So would she have been responsible for multiple people dying under her care? Yes. And not just of old age, but punishment techniques specifically. And they were very harsh. Um, but was she a serial killer? Again, you know, Victor's write the history. So not a hundred percent sure. So maybe that's why it's not added in, although classically she is typed in with the serial killers. Like, yeah. Um, it was a pretty decent video, though. I love their animation style. It's ridiculous. I, I love the evil laughs. I mean, it, 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 and I like their little happy dance, like, we're milking the cow. Um, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's nice, basic kind of information. It's nothing... Right. So, uh, here's the thing. In a video like this, you kind of got to give basic information. If they'd have gone in-depth on too many of them, it this easily could have been like an hour-long yeah, video. Yeah. Which I would have watched. Uh, we definitely would have watched it. We yeah. would not have reacted to it. Right, or maybe just once. in pieces, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? But just as many, you know, pieces as right. a lot of the bodies are found. Um, but I don't necessarily agree with some of the few that they had on there, or at least, at the very least, the order. Right. Because I feel like he kind of needs to specify how he's ordering them. Or is he ordering them from least known to best right. known? Is he ordering well, and then them he said from some best of them, known to least known? Some of them had to do with the, the body, counts. body count. But again, it's definitely never heard of. And I think there were two people in there that I hadn't. Right. I, I was probably at about four or five that I didn't really yeah. know. Yeah. So... Um, and some of them just should not have been on the list. In well, my I don't feel like the co-ed killer should have been on the, the list. The co-ed killer shouldn't have been on it. Uh, Hanson shouldn't have been the, on the Hansen list. Hanson shouldn't have been The vampire of Dusseldorf shouldn't have been, shouldn't on, have the been the list, on there. Yeah. Um, the death lady at the beginning. Oh, Vicky, uh, I think. It, Vicky something. Right. Yeah. Um, Angel of Death is what I know her by. Right. Um, she shouldn't have been in it. Right. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, don't... honestly, the monster of... The Andes, he's huge. He was in the Guinness Book of World Records um, right. temporarily. And then, of course, there was the quartet. And Guinness, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, what is that? That's not They're like, right. let's reward you for... And then someone's yeah. like, hey, that's bad PR. Ooh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no. no yeah, I that like should that. have been a no-brainer in the first place. You don't reward. I thought about that, yeah. I mean, like, and I do like the way that he phrased it, that they took it back because they didn't want to have somebody compete. If that doesn't put the seal of just disbelief on humanity, that's disgusting. And to be, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest. Somebody would have. They don't need the world record to compete for it. People, there have been killers out there that, are, that have said, I want to kill right. more than this person did. No, I know, even without the Guinness, yeah, without the award, but what I'm saying but is it's just... But the award just, it's definitely just, is a it prize would be, it would, at the end yeah. of the... But it's disgusting. It's disgusting that that's how people think. Like, 
oh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to be a serial killer, but you know what? I'm going to be the best serial killer, so I'm going to kill more than so-and-so. Right. I just, you know, what? But yeah, let's but not no. give him cookies and milk at the end of it, y'all. So, but yeah, it, it was a fun thing to do. This is something I'd like to do more of. And guys, and not just based on serial killers, that's just what I right. asked her. Um, it could be comedy videos, things based around horror. Right. Um, Other top ten superheroes. Top whatever. Yeah. I mean, just that's... something that you guys might think that we might enjoy watching in terms of disturbing stories. Informative. It doesn't have to be a funny. top ten. It could even be just like the most disturbing stories on the internet right. or most fun, whatever, whatever. Like, let us know down below what you guys want to see us. That is not a music video. That is not a music video. Right. Um, that you guys would like to see us react to. Probably keep it under 10 minutes. I wouldn't I mean, say 15. 10. I'd say keep it under 20. Right. Um, 15 is actually usually a sweet spot for things like these. Right. And I have no problem sitting here. I think we've been here for about 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't have a problem sitting here. I'm just saying, like, depending on how long they want to sit there. Right. Um, but yeah. Don't so, give us something that's half an hour. Let us know. Right. All right, so with that being said, if you guys liked the video, slash that like button, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, comment down below what did you think of the 13 terrifying serial killers you've definitely never heard of. I don't even remember what And tell us how many you've heard of. People are named. Yeah, let us know how many you've heard of. Yeah. Personally. Um, I don't remember what the guy's name is again. It's info something. Right. Um, also comment down below if there's anything else you guys, I already said that. Yeah. Push our uh, buttons, push come to our buttons, buttons, side. Do all uh, things. Yeah. We'll see you later. We love you guys, and we cannot wait to see you depraved people.